Tonight, a new installment in the Survivor Series. Back to the island. Not any island. Long Island. Two tribes trying to outwit, outplay, outlast the opponents. The contestants have been on hand for 11 days of this tribal rivalry. The Islanders and Leafs. Depleted numbers as injury and attrition have seen many cast off the island. Tonight's challenge for Game 6. Will the Leafs have immunity and move to Round 2? Or will those Islanders live to play another day? and Darcy Tucker took out Michael Pekka. He referees again tonight along with Kerry Fraser, two veterans at the helm. As you can imagine, it's a hostile atmosphere. There's Scott O trying to listen in. Good evening. Welcome to Hockey Night in Canada. And Scott, you can set the scene there. Go ahead. Okay, Ron, the 16,297 in here tonight will ratchet up the noise level a couple of notches with the knowledge this could be the Islanders' last game of the season. And somehow they've got to find a way without Mike Pekka and Kenny Janssen. Ray Schultz or Brad Deer and Evgeny Korolev are in for Pekka and Janssen tonight. You know the lead coaching staff obviously spent considerable time pouring over their lineup sheet. None of their players should be asked to leave early tonight as a result of a clerical error. In fact, the Leafs will go with the same lineup they planned for Friday night, meaning Alan McCauley will once again get to center their top line between Roberts and Hoagland. It's an elimination game, Ron, and it sounds like it. Thank you, Scott. The New York Islanders have the best home playoff winning percentage in the history of the NHL. It's been a homer series all the way. We don't want to miss anything for you, so we'll come right back to the rink. Bob Cole, Harry Neal are standing by to present Game 6 of the Eastern Quarterfinal between the Islanders and the Leafs on Hockey Night in Canada next. and paying proper respect to our friends and neighbors north of the border for the singing of the Canadian anthem, followed by the singing of our national anthem. Here to sing this evening is fellow Long Islander, author, singer, and Broadway star. Currently, she's metal soprano in the HBO series The Sopranos. Please welcome Jamie Lynn Sigler.
gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Perry Fraser, one of the referees. He'll start proceedings in a moment. With him will be Paul Dvorsky, Derek Kamel, and Scott Briscoe are the linesmen. And starting for Toronto, Lume and Berg on the blue line. Corson, Roberts, McCauley, the three forwards to start. Against the point, and Evgeny Korolev, number 36 for the New York Islanders, who come back and take the puck from his goalie. Harry Spates and Jim Cummins in the lineup tonight. And they're up front. McCauley, he's had a strong series thus far. Shoots the puck off the boards. Lumi got it back. Here's the first good test. Hoagland ripped that one right on the net. And Osgood made the save. And the Leafs come back to pick it up. Big noisy crowd again, as you well might imagine. They've been here for over an hour. And cheering before any players turned up at all. It's going to be against Toronto, and it's going to be Gary Roberts. He'll get it. Is it Tucker or Roberts? Oh, wait a minute. Apologies. Cummins was the guy who was pinpointed by the referee down in this stand. Watch. Here is the first shift by Cummins in his first game in the playoffs. It goes right after Roberts. Roberts hasn't touched the puck yet. And Cummins takes a dumb penalty. This is a sudden death game for the Islanders. You can't be taking those kinds of penalties and get away with it. Roberts. Bumping first, and then Cummins came after him, chased him, hooked him, did about everything before he got the uh, attention of the referee down on this end. Paul Dvorsky. So the first power play of this game. And this is a huge game for both teams. Islanders will be eliminated with a loss tonight. Looking to the crowd, the Maple Leafs with injured players would welcome some days off if they end this series tonight. Peter Laviolette right up front with his team saying they did not play a good game at all in game five. He expects a better effort tonight. They're going without some people. That is Mr. Peckett, Tarnstrom, and Janssen. Tucker was booed every time he touched the puck in the warm-up. 
as was Robert, so they are not very popular here among the New York Islander fans. Mentioned that's not a very good penalty for Cummins to take. This is too important a game to really uh, try to get back at somebody. Got to play hockey. The Leafs are in on the attack. Osgood covering on the short side. Green gets it back. He ripped the shot. He came close with that. McKinley, a foot and a foot saved on that by Osgood. Tucker took the shot. He was wide open. He might have silenced this crowd early with a goal right there. Of all people. Fired on the boards. Does it get out? No. McCabe kept it in. The Leafs set it up on this power play. It'll be McCabe again. He had to one time it to the corner. Green missed it. Osgood played it hard. It'll be stopped at the line by McCabe again. Up he goes to the Gilney. He's bumped. Puck in here close. The player flattened in front of the net. Green, he was nailed. Went flying and shut down the ice. 30 seconds left on this power play, the first of the game. Leafs get the puck in. Yeah, they did that. Roberts is in, swift. In the corner. Back to Roberts on his skate. Roberts puck. Got the puck in behind the net, though. Hammerlick might get it out. Nope, stopped at the line by Lume. He waited, gave it to McCauley. He lost it. They keep it in, though. And again to the corner. Roberts missed that. McCauley was out. And the Islanders get it out and down the ice as Cummins steps from the penalty box. Therefore, that's an icing call against New York. Well, the Leafs power play, 3 for 33 in this series and only 1 for 15 in this building. But they do get two good opportunities on the power play. Tucker, this point-blank shot that Osgood stops, and then Green gets another one. And Darcy Tucker goes to the front of the net, attracts some attention, you can see, and here's the chance. You're not going to get many any better than that one. Travis Green also had an opportunity. She takes a little flip pass from Coverley, gets around the defenseman, but can't get around the corner for much of an angle on that chance. Great chance by Tucker. Was one of two shots on that power play. Lume made a good move. Comes in on a sharp angle, centered it, covered up, and Panasha comes out for New York. Schultz playing his first game, number 39, dumps it into the Maple Leaf zone. Schultz is the defenseman. Game of Pierre's right now. Islanders pressing. First shot is blocked. Second shot, blocked again. And Kamasha lost it. Schultz, quick pass on the blue line. Knocked down. The stick was high, doesn't matter. It got out. And the Islanders get possession. Kamasha took that pass and shot it down. Joseph out, played it to the corner quickly. Kamasha for checking. And the Maple Leafs get it down to center. Healy had the turn to go off. He and Doni are changing. This is for Aleb. Pass gets up to Hammerlick. He's nailed at center by Kondrowski of the Maple Leafs. Top to the boards. A good fast pace to start this game. At the line. Michael couldn't get it out. It's called on the offside, but it did come out and batted back in quickly. It played 3-54 scoreless. Well, Pat Quinn and his opposing uh, coach, uh, Lavalette, have probably just said the same thing to their team. Both of them badly hurt. To be upset over what you do not have is to waste what you do have. We can't do anything about the injuries, and there's a pretty good lineup not dressed tonight when you add both teams' injured players. From the starting game, Matt Sundin, Michael Renberg, Corey Cross, gone for the Maple Leafs. Brad Istister, Michael Pekka, and Kenny Johnson for the New York Islanders. You might say all heavyweights. Solid players, all of them. Joseph came out to play the puck the moment he touched it. The whistle sounded. Another power play coming. Well, now it's Volk of the Maple Leafs who gets the penalty for hooking. He hooked Tchaikovsky. He may have clipped him in the face. Two minutes anyway. Cummins got the first. Now the Maple Leafs' Gary Volk. Islanders power play has been pretty good in the series. 
Shot into the zone. Far corner. Point up to keep it in. In behind the net. Harris tried to pass one out. And he comes in looking for it. Hit in the corner by Bates. Away from Cabernet. Harris. Bates. Into the corner it goes and back out. Hammerlin tries the pass. Point missed that. Then had to hurry it off to the corner around the net. Bates comes out. Trying to jab it in. A scramble for it. Yashin was right there. But he couldn't lift the puck up over Joseph. And they keep it out. Well, Joseph made a good play to find the puck. The Islanders are 5 for 14 on the power play here in New York. That's number one in the playoffs. And 8 for 28 total. That's number one in the playoffs. And here's an attempt from behind the net. But Joseph cuts off Bates and there's no chance, although the puck does bounce around. And the next thing you know, Yashin and Parrish are in there trying to find it. Joseph finds it before they do. And we have a whistle and a face-off in the leaf zone. Shots are 4-2 in favor of Toronto. The crowd drawn, of course, all the time when the goalies are down. And there's a chance of a loose puck. Everybody driving for the first goal. Islanders power play. Drives it. Tarkovsky was right there in front of the net. And the Islanders get a power play goal. Another power play goal. And the first goal of this game is a big one indeed. The New York Islanders. One nothing. This crowd is dancing early. It's the 11th goal the Islanders have scored here in New York. And the seventh one that's on a rebound. Corson loses the draw, then he's knocked down. And the puck is stopped by the right pad of Joseph. But the rebound comes right to Tchaikovsky. There's the shot. The Leaf defensemen go after the puck. Nobody touches Tchaikovsky. And it is 1-0 New York. Corson loses the draw, then Miller does not let him out. And the league bench was screaming for face-off interference. In a game they just have to win. The stale are in these playoffs. They haven't been here very often. Eight years. And they want to make the best of this one. So they get the first goal. Let's see what develops now. The Maple Leafs Roberts without the helmet comes up. Gets ready for the shot, decides to pass. But in deep was McCauley, and on a sharp angle, he was covered on the short side easily by Chris Osgood. Maple Leafs keep it in, good hustle by Hogan. Took a look, fired it over to Roberts. Roberts snapped it behind the net to McCauley, and Hogan out front. McCauley is pounded in the corner, though. Got a stick on it and got it out. The Islanders will clear it. Harris and Bates together, they get it in on Joseph. From Hamilton and Miller, 507. Power play goal for the New York Islanders. 1 0. Carmelay flip one up there at center ice is green. Offside, McGillney ahead of that play. Call back. Power play goal gives the Islanders the lead. 1 0. Tarkovsky got 22 goals during the season. This is his first one of the playoffs. Miller won the faceoff. The Leaf defense in Berg and Lume go for the puck as both Hunter and Tarkovsky were in front. The rebound off pad, Joseph's pad right to Tarkovsky. Marius Tarkovsky with the first goal of this game and a big one it is. Schultz got as far as center and lost it. Tarkovsky on there again, backhands it in. A little too far for Hunter this time. And the Maple Leafs have three coming down. Across the line, Panikorovsky in with a shot. Right on, rebound, he missed it. Jumped over his stick. Vault got it back near the line, though, and then Miller took that away. Tarkovsky is up there ahead of him. And a goal, pass, high shot. Tarkovsky firing it in, and another penalty coming as Joseph Smothers this. And the Maple Leafs are running into penalties here early in this hockey game. Big Panikorovsky back in a defensive mode a little too uh, heavy on the check 
Well, let's have a look at the rush. Tchaikovsky, it's a two-on-two -two rush. And Tchaikovsky, on a weird play, does the back. And you can see on the, after the back pass, which was right on the tape, there's the shot by Hunter. And then he's leveled by Ponikorovsky, who tried to catch him on the back check. A cross check, of course, as you saw. A 6.54 the time. Alexei Ponikorovsky on the Maple Leafs in the box. Islanders one for one on the power play. And here they go again. Seven minutes into the first period. Back to the line here. Rebound right there. Up clear to the boards and out into center ice. Hammerlick back. They move it up quickly. Yashin gets the zone. Yashin takes a look around. Fires the pass. That was good. And the shot is deflected. Tucker got a stick down in front of the O'Coin shot and easily deflected that. Well, the New York Islanders have scored 15 goals in this series. Nine of them on the power play. One penalty shot. Five even strength. And these three Cowboys, they know what to do on this ice. They weren't very successful in Toronto on the three games they played. But you can see the damage they've done here at home. Only 25 seconds into the power play. Couldn't stop it. Came back rather quickly and down the ice. Hammerlick, a point. Yashin turns right in front of him. Takes on the left side, takes his pass. Harris up on the play, too. Rink wide. Here comes a point shooting. That is blocked again, and into the crowd it goes. Point ripping his second shot. This one blocked by Healy. Nice block by the penalty killing forward. A coin can really shoot the puck. Five points. He's tied for second in the NHL among defensemen scoring. He leads the NHL playoff players with an average of 30 minutes and 46 seconds every game. And he's tied for the or he leads the team in power play points. He is a horse and he's playing the best hockey of his career here on the island. Islanders are running a pretty good power play again by the looks of it. They have a minute 15 left on it to do more damage. Already a goal on the power play. At the blue line, the two big defensemen pass it back and forth. It goes in deep. Shot from in close. Next stop. Murkowski after it again. He's hot. Got the first goal. Hammerlick now moves up. Feeds it into him. In the corner. Murkowski grabbed from behind and by McCabe. They keep it in though. Back to the line now. Point. Take the shot. Through the pass in. Krakowski gets it again. Looks back to the defense pair. Gets set himself. He sees a point coming in. The low shot. Rebound. Hammerlick was in on top of Joseph. Hammerlick did a fine job. Made in by Hunter. Hammerlick backs up to the line again. A point. Here's Hammerlick. A point is going to shoot it again. Maybe not. He was covered by Corson. Now the shot and blown by. The goalie, Curtis Joseph, will hang on with 22 seconds left in the penalty. Well, a good stop by Joseph. Not a real good scoring chance on the bad angle shot, but the key is he got a whistle. And the penalty killers who have been out there for a while get a chance to change with 22 seconds left in the penalty. What a chance Roman Hammerlick had on a rebound as he waltzed in off the point and had a four-footer that he couldn't book by Joseph. Coverley makes a nice play and gets the stick back to Joseph. Remember, Osgood had a bad goal scored against him, and he lost the stick here in game number four. one nothing, New York. Lifted to the line. It'll be cleared by Toronto. Tucker comes up there and gets over the line. Early. Green, though, made a fake at the blue line twice, and Tucker... Did okay on the first fake, but couldn't stop for the second. He was offside. Well, Darcy Tucker and Gary Roberts attract attention from the fans every time they touch the puck. Gary Roberts. That's the one that cost him a major penalty on Kenny Johnson. And here's the one 
that cost Pekka surgery. Sketchard of the New York Islanders passed it back. Bannon couldn't get the center to shoot it in. Tucker did a good job on him. Out of the penalty box is Ponikorowski. He tripped coming out and broke his stick. Has to go to the bench right away. Kamasha in centering pass. Off the stick comes back to him. He's turned around. The crowd wanted another one called. Kamasha is back up and after the puck. Here's with the Sketchard. He turns from the corner, gets it back. Kamasha can't get a shot. Whistle is in low and wide. Behind the net, Islanders come out with it. Passes off a skate that time, and Domi turns. Ty Domi up the center. Penalty coming up against the New York Islanders this time. As Osgood comes out to play the puck, it is called by Kerry Fraser. And the Maple Leafs will go on the power play as Skatcherd is whistled down for holding. 10.21 to go. The shots are 8-6 for the Islanders. It's 1-0 New York in this, the sixth game of this series. Let's have a look at the penalty to Skatcherd. On a rush. There it is right there. As you can see, he hauls down the Leaf player who's trying to get in the rush. And it's a pretty easy call for the referee. Toronto's second power play in this first period. They had two shots the first time. One, a terrific scoring chance by Darcy Tucker. That's what stopped him. They're one for 16 here in this building in this series. McKay takes a shot. Rebound is right in front of the net. And McCauley had it ripped off his stick before he could get a shot. What a chance he had. Their backhand, the Islanders are. In a shorthanded situation, Blake had a chance. Joseph left it for a Two goals in game five. High one gets in there. Osgood knocked it down. Roberts nearly got in there to take it from him. Cleared out by Jason Blake. Well played by Blake. Leafs get it up over the line, and there he is again. Blake gets it out and down the ice, and he turns to get a rest. for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Just over 10 minutes gone in the period. In his own zone, Parrish stopped it hard. And it's whipped out by Bates again, down the ice. Dave through center, dumped it in. It's called icing. Great penalty killing by Blake first, and then Bates, and then they shift it back and forth. Two good penalty killers. On the Leafs' power play, three goals and missed their 35th attempt, attempt with a man advantage. And at this time of the year, your special teams have to be better than uh, the Leafs have been. Alan McCauley had not a bad chance here early on this penalty as he jumped in behind a coin, but couldn't get it by Osgood. Islanders have a goal. Tchaikovsky from Hammerlick and Miller, 5.07 on the power play. 52 seconds left on this power play for Toronto. The point stops. Now they get together and bring it to center. The center, Goni, decides he better shoot it. All lined up at the line, and that was good to clear to the line, but not out. Toronto keeps it in to the corner. Back out on the boards near the blue line. Tucker fires it in again. Green is in there. He's pounded by Hammerlick. Tucker comes in to help. He's bumped by a point twice to the line. of point It's his man. And rushing back was Lume just in time. Islanders are playing a rough. Here's a chance for the shot left by Osgood. He'll get cheered as he hangs on to that wrister right into his glove. And again, the crowd gathers in behind the net. Nine seconds left in the Islanders' penalty. Well, there's no question about the fact that the Islanders are much more aggressive here than they were in either game in Tor or any of the games in Toronto. And that's the way they played when they won two of them. And no matter where you look on the ice, there seems to be... This is one I think the point was lucky to get away with well after... A good penalty killing job, and LaPointe's done a nice job at that here in New York. He's the elder statesman among players here. 
and he is as delighted as anybody to be in the playoffs. He had the watch him for eight, seven straight years. Leaves win the draw, get one more scoring chance maybe on the power play. Belak, that's blocked, and the penalty now to Scatchard is over. He's out of the box. Eight, 16 left to play in the first period. One nothing. The New York Islanders are ahead in a game they must win. Puck is along the boards inside the line. Harry's kept it in, heads for the net. Nearly got a shot in there. He sent flying in front of the goal. Scatcher is bumped up on the boards. Toronto in a little trouble now. Skate out with it. Four of them. They come away to center. Pass to the right side. Corson doesn't handle it cleanly. Properly keeps going. Gets it back neatly to the line. Comes the shot. The big rebound is there. And the Islanders grab it. And it's cleared by Cairns. Down the ice. They're going to call it icing. So they'll bring that back. Ty Domi on the line change was cuffed by Korolev and Cairns. Politely, I might add. But this isn't as polite as it looked like it was going to be. There's a vivid description of Ty Domi by the Islander fans, I would say. You have an idea what it is. They don't waste any time getting to it. I think they're going to give penalties here to Cairns and Domi. They had plenty of uh, words in the game the other night in Toronto. Nothing developed. Nothing developed here. And the officials are well aware of the previous game, of course. They go over their game sheets, too. And game reports to see what had happened before they get to do their job here tonight in New York. I think Healy and uh, Scatchard are going to get penalties. Or Healy and Kavasa. They haven't finished sending them to the box yet. And I really think the referees have to quiet this stuff down. And the only way to do it is give them penalties when they get into a melee. Stanley Cup playoffs and Hockey Night in Canada brought to you by the Bat Flu. Four on the four hockey now with Cairns and Domi off for roughing. Well, the whistle went and the teams were changing and Domi goes to the box. He gets a cuff there from Schultz and then he gets a little bump from Cairns. Then Schultz comes back, but really it, Healy comes in to look at Schultz and Scatchard and away they go and the referees decided the two most active go to the box. Van Imp has the puck in his own zone and goes deeper. Kavasha swings away. Handle the puck well. Big man. Gates beautifully. Comes to center with Yashin. And here he comes. Kavasha. Comes in with a shot. And that's stopped by Joseph. A good rush by Kavasha. And set up by Yashin for the shot. Leeds get the puck out. Through center. Gilly just rolled it up over the line. And Bandit backs up again. Gilly is for checking. He didn't have any trouble getting by him. Gilly. Couldn't handle the pass. It escaped. Kavasha coming up again with Yashin. Yashin trying to move in. He nearly did get in. He's around the net now. Poked it back out front. Kavasha takes it for Yashin. Shoot! to Alexei Yashin and like that it's 2-0. The Islanders got the lead they wanted. Osgood coming out. Pauly missed that chance. Islanders get the puck up to center. Got back into 
Kroski, who got the first goal. On with the brakes, turning back, and then fired the shot. Joseph had a little trouble with that. In behind the net to the corner. Now the play is called. Your Commodore's goal is second of the playoffs. Score for number 79, Alexi Hansen. Puck went over the board. And uh, so the face-off, I think, is going to come outside. 12, Kamasha, 28 men in. Time of the goal, 13, 26. Or it was a hand pass. There's the penalty that the fans wanted, but couldn't talk the referee into calling. Islanders lead 2 0. Alexei Yashin makes it 2 0. Islanders, Kavasha and Van Inf, by the way, got the assist on that goal by this man, his second of the playoffs. It came at 13 26. We've now played 14 06 of the first period. 2 0. Comes another shot right on. Joseph stumbled with that one going down. But held on to it, did not give up a rebound, and two Islanders were coming in hard. Bates got very close, and there's Parrish. The Islanders have outshot the Leafs 11-4 to ever since the Leafs had a 4-0 advantage. The draws lost quickly. The two powerful shot defensemen handle the puck. Hammerlick to a coin, and Joseph has to make a stop on a 47-footer. Bates stays on to win the draw. Boy, shoots! High shot! Joseph caught that one on the shoulder and shook him a little bit. Leafs get three off the that kind of shot. Rebound score! Bielak coming in and got the rebound and lifted the puck into the top of the net. And the Maple Leafs cut the lead just like that. It's two to one. Belak, who's certainly not known for his offensive skills, jumps into the rush. The Leafs lose the draw for the second time in a row. And a coin takes the shot, and it hits Parrish, I think. And the rebound goes, and away go the Leafs. Three men on the rush. And Belak, who's the third man who jumped into the rush in the four-on-four -four situation, remember? So the defenseman often becomes the offensive difference. There's the shot and the rebound goes to Bielak and he backhands it over a sprawling Osgood. 14-23 the time of the goal by the Maple Leaf defenseman forward Bielak. So it's a 2-1 game. All Islanders up for that rush. Three of them in on goal. Bolt tries a shot. That's blocked. It comes right back to him. Goes around the net. Domi has it. He's held in on the board. Pretty well by Coral out. Domi got loose. Got the puck out. Domi stops. Near the boards. In the corner he goes. Reichel behind the net. Reichel trying to get out with it. And he does come out. Pass shot. Just wide. Domi had that shot. Off the stick and wide. And Miller... Gets the puck of his own line and leaves it for the defenseman for that to bring it out and down the ice. However, that's going to be an instant call if they get to it, they do. And Tchaikovsky kept coming and dealt a blow and he's going to go. There he is. He should go. On an icing, when the opponent beats you to the puck, you can avoid the hit if you want it. And that will be called every time by the officials. A body check on an icing. If it happens anywhere else on the rink, this is not a penalty. But on an icing, to protect the man that won the race, they'll call it. And the whistle had gone seconds before he had lots of time, in the opinion of the referee, not to continue and make that hit. Well, once the, uh, the puck is touched, the hit becomes useless. Parrish got hit just before the lead scored on a shot from the blue line. 37 in white. The goes to the net and whammo right in the face off Joseph's shoulder and he's cut and getting some medical attention on the Islander bench. The Belak goal assisted by Green and Forson at 14-23. It was that trio on the rush and Belak got the rebound and lifted it over Osgood. It's a 2-1 lead now for the New York Islanders. Power lay back. Power play Toronto. 0 for 
two. In back of the net it goes. The coin. Saw the puck, but too late to move it. The Leafs are on it quickly. Dave shot. Stopped by Osgood. It was a rebound, but covered by Hammerlick. Dave again at the blue line. Pass to Tucker to McCabe. Look out. Shot off the leg. Blocked beautifully by LaPointe. McGinley again. Shot angle for him. Centering pass off the boards. McCabe is at the blue line. But it goes to McGinley now. Cave shot. Drilled wide of the net. At the side of the goal. Scramble forward. Hammerlet takes it. Lips it high. And does get it out. Off the glass. All the way down the ice. 2-1. Islanders lead. Maple Leafs trying to tie. 3.45 left in the period. They dump it in. Out of the net again is Osgood. Playing a lot. High this time. Swinging at it was Lumet. Did keep it in. Pauly to the corner. Open spun around by a point. Leafs get it back for the point. Lume sets it up. Shot doesn't get through, but there's McCauley. In front of the net, scramble at the goal line. I think that got over the line. I do believe it got over the line. And Curry Fraser is in there. And he says, waves his arms. I don't know what he's saying, but no doubt they're going to go upstairs. But from this angle, and I might say, folks, for this game, Harry and I have been placed down very close to the ice surface. And from this angle, Harry, I think I saw daylight. You might have, but did Fraser blow the whistle? That might be why he waved it off with enthusiasm. I, well, the puck was loose. I, I can't see why he would. Well, they're not going to go upstairs to find out if he blew the whistle. He could call it off down That's on right. the ice if he did. That's right. Well, let's have a look and see whether we can see what the video goal judge is looking at. I, saw I would daylight. say it's in. I saw white ice. Okay. Let's have to what, see what the net cam tells us. It's a tough one. Got to get up above, I think. See it? Here it comes. White it's ice, in. maybe. 2-2. Two, two. I think so. Well, he's on the phone. They're looking at what you just saw at home, folks. And he's going to turn now to center ice, either wave his arms like he did in there. I think he was waving to say, everybody move out. We're going to take our time here and be calm. And that's what he's doing now. He's taking his time, and he is calm. He's talking to the video goal judge upstairs. John D'Amico is the supervisor of the officials. He's up there, too, looking at the videotapes. If he turns and, as you know, points to center ice, this game is tied with 3.18 left in the first period. I wonder if he's checking to see whether the Leaf player bumped it with his glove, which I don't think he did, but he was right there. He's That's certainly taken a lot longer to get the solution to this problem if he has a chance to look at the tape we looked at. Well, what they're doing, they're looking at everything they can get their hands on right now they're not going to take any chances they looked at uh, we looked at three or four like you did at home and now he's doing the same thing every angle that they can possibly get they'll try because you know this is big stuff now you watch the puck come through the blue ice there's the goal line there's the white ice that's in no doubt now. about that okay it's a goal who's gonna get it I don't know who touched it last 318 left in the period and uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs had tied the game right here. It's 2-2. Shots are even 12-12. So it's a brand new game right now. Well, let's have a look. This is a tough one. This would be an impossible call to be right for sure if it wasn't for the video replay. Jonas Hoagland, I think, is going to get credit for it. I'll tell you one thing. Roberts made a good play because he was thinking of bumping that puck with his glove. Had he done that, it would not have counted, obviously. Two goals in two minutes and 19 seconds. The Islanders came out in a rush. Got a power play goal from Tchaikovsky at 5.07. And then Yashin got a second of the playoffs at 13.26. Then Bilak. And now Holman. Cleared on a glove out to center ice. Oakland's third of the playoffs from McCauley and Lume. And that's another power play goal. Maple Leafs have tied the game. 16-42 of the top. 2 to 50 left in the period. Good thing to see Parrish back out there. Remember, he got hit in the face with the puck. Shoots it in. Joseph out. Calls to Lume. Lume says he can play it. He does. And the Maple Leafs bring it out. Lifted high, though, up as far as the line. Hammerlick saw Kamasha up there. He strides in, drops it. Yes, and coming out in the slot area again. Now all the way back to the line. Low shot is blocked each of the eight.
son of Joseph. 20 left in the period. Maple Leafs up. Connolly is drilling it. It's in the line of the goal. And the Islanders can get it up to the point. He nearly got away. Knocked down at center ice. That was Kabatsu, by the way. Up at center, who is behind everybody. Just didn't control it. Yashin with him, too. Now Kabasha in his own zone, trying to stop Dolan. Again, Dolan. Picked it behind the net. Lifted away to the far side. That's where Corson stops it. Pokes it ahead. Lee player knocked to the ice. And Van Amp got as far as center. He didn't reach the center red line. Shot it in. It was on goal. Two teams changing. 1.30 left in the period. Hammerlick, the first one back. Tucker watching him. Here comes Green. Missed him with a hit. Blake brings it out. Gets up there fast. Center ice. Broken up. Cleared by Toronto back. Where Hammerlick was waiting again. By Tucker with that one. 2-2 tie. 105. That's Tucker who was upended by Webb. Webb is going after everybody. And he missed the crowd at center ice that time. Webb comes again. Watch out, Travis. He got him. And he knocked down. Three hits. Turning to Strakowski. Back up to center. Leave Webb. They're chanting again. He's done. Back in over the line for Roberts. Roberts is knocked down. Pelash was up with him. Tchaikovsky turns. 25 seconds left in the period. Right wing pass, Tchaikovsky. And up there is Bates. Right behind him. Shot is deflected. Wide of the net. The Leafs try to clear it. They do. 10 seconds left in the period. With Ben and back to take it away from Hoagland. Before any damage is done. Roberts caught up with him. And they do. Two seconds left. The puck goes harmlessly to the corner. And the horn goes to end a spirited first period here in Uniondale, New York. Don Cherry in the coach's corner after this first period. And it's done with the honors scoring two and the Leafs coming back with two. So after 20 minutes here in game six, it's a 2-2 two -two tie. This is actually uh, from last night in Vancouver. I thought you'd be watching, but you're out watching hockey. You didn't get home in time to see this on our oh, last Saturday nice. night. Don very Cherry's nice. King from uh, Vancouver. Those Vancouver fans uh, know what they're talking about. Where were you? You were watching uh, kids We play? had Prospect Under 17. I was going all day from 6.30. Hmm. But I got back and watched a lot of the games and everything. You know, I got a funny thing in the warm-up. You know, these warm... You people that go to a hockey game, when you don't go to the warm-ups, you're nuts. You should get there, whether, wherever they open, get there. Watch what... Uh, who is it? McCabe does this. Watch McCabe. Watch, watch the goalie. Snow up on top there. Watch him get the puck. Shoot it right between his legs. I mean, and then we... We got Green going a little yapping here, well, too, we'll show boy. Highlight it just to so make sure everybody sees it. Oh, you want to, to highlight again? Okay, watch. I check. Watch that. Oh, this is, uh, this is what uh, Howie Meeker used to do, remember? Just a little. <laughs> now, normally that would cause trouble. I tell trouble. you, that would cause trouble. Nobody saw it. There would be. It's the best one I ever saw in my life. The best one. I hear Green going a little nuts. The best one I ever saw. This is a true story. In Rochester, got a tough team. Dennis Ball got me uh, Battleship Kelly. Maybe the toughest guy. He used to play anchors away in Pittsburgh when he came on. Went to the National League. When he got, went to the National League, he sent me a colored television. I never forgot that. Anyhow, he's there. And we run out of pucks at the end. I'm up there watching them, coaching them. You run out of pucks. Honest to God, it's the truth. He went down in their end and pushed their goalie out of the way and pulled, took the pucks out. It was unbelievable. That's the kind of tough team we had. I was, uh, I'm sure everybody at home is thinking the same thing, too, that you have a color TV with you're going through your pink period here and looking pretty dapper tonight, I have to say. A couple of penalties. Oh, you don't like pink? No, no, guys like, like me can wear pink. Oh, that's true. Guys like you, when you wear pink, it's... I know. You'll start holding your hand in the bars. But go ahead. What do you want? The two penalties that uh, Toronto oh, took that drove you crazy. You know, I don't understand it. I mean, Pat's in there talking to his uh, 
coaches now. I know. Can you imagine? Watch these coaches. Watch these, watch these penalties. If you're telling me guys are thinking, cross check a guy after the thing from behind and the referee 10 feet away. Dumb, dumb, you're one play goal behind. Now, watch this one. What is Valk thinking of? He spares a guy in the face. He's lucky he didn't get a five minute. What are they thinking of? I don't mind you take a guy and you ram him and you do something with it. Dumb, dumb penalties like that will kill you, and they scored on one. But, yes, and a matter of fact, uh, Pat Quinn, you could see he was a little angry when Ooh. Shane Corson and Kip Miller went down in a... Uh, they're not going to call that. They're not going to call that stuff, but they're called <laughs> dummies like that. Here's uh, something neat that you dug up from the Lillehammer Olympic Games. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, remember I told you that uh, Johansson has a history of doing that, and he's not going to learn? Well, Kathy Broderick got this here. But watch this here. Here he gets it here. He turns back, right? Now, watch it, Lillehammer. Watch this here. You people remember. He lays there. Watch. The puck goes in the corner. Watch. Look, look, look. Goes the other way. If he comes back the other, <coughs> the other way, he's not in trouble at all. Oh, we just thought you throw. And there he is laying there again. And that's not to encourage hitting from behind. It's such a tough one, right? Because every time you show it, you see like a guy turns. You're I, justifying look, hits what? from behind. I know. I'm not justifying right. the hits from behind. The guy's there. All he had to do when he picked up the puck is just keep on going. He'd have walked out. The other way, he'd have walked out. When you turn, am I going through this again? No. When you turn back, when the guy's coming, you're meat. Keep going, And kids. it's right in the NHL casebook, rulebook, everything, that if you yeah. turn, it's no penalty. But I now, the other one is uh, Tucker on Pekka. You never did get to respond to whether or not you felt Darcy low-bridged Michael and tore up his knee. Oh, so let's have a look at that hit, and you give us your... Uh, yeah, Colin Campbell didn't look at it. Uh, do you think he should have? Well... He did go low, but he hit him with his hip. But I can't understand Pekka. The one thing I don't understand is what Pekka thinking of. He's got this pit bull card, and because he hates him, Tucker hates Pekka. Do you see him before he went like that? He grabbed. You know he's going to come, and he passes a puck one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and hits him, and he's not looking at him. When you know a pit bull's coming at you, I can't understand Pekka not getting ready. I'm not going to say it's borderline. Let me yeah. put it that way. It's borderline. It'd be tough to call that because he did hit him with his hip. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a clipping going along the ice. It's not, I love Hilliard Graves. He's Hilliard watching. Graves, not I wasn't going to mention Hilliard used to be good. Hilliard, Sorry, Hilliard Graves, now that was a different story. Different era, too. Here's uh, Vancouver. What's that got to do with it? A different well, era? it was such a mean era that what Hilliard did, I don't think, was out of place. Are you kidding? He, Hilliard Graves... Jack Lynch, he, he ruined lives, yeah. the Hilliard Graves. But he, he had to stay in a, in a tough league, I'm sure he had to... He's just a little guy. Yeah. Someday I'll go through his thing. Anyhow, We're what are you going to do? Yes, let's do Hashik. You want to do Hashik Hall okay. and Gilmore? All right, let me just, let me just go. Yeah, I want to do them. Remember I said that hasik has got to get... He's got to get in the Toronto game. Go, Glenn, drink water. Go, Glenn. He's got to get in the game. Got to get at the referees. Now watch. This is when he started Vancouver. He gets up. Now he's starting to get in the game. See him whack him. That's it. Remember he said this is what he's got to do. Giving him heck. Remember, he used to throw gloves and stuff like that? He's not in the game when he's falling asleep. Falls asleep like that. And I'll tell you, Detroit, here he is over there again. Vancouver did a great job, and, and you've you got to be proud of them. But when they, when they didn't come out playing desperate that third game, and I'll tell you, from here on in, nobody's going to get Detroit uh, napping from now on. That's what happened. They got him the first two times napping. Nobody's going to do it again. Iserman, Hall. Hall, we're going to show a thing. Hall, let's hurry. Let's Hall. Watch this here. How this guy gets in. Uh, and he's an invisible man. How can a guy that scores 4,000 goals be open? Look at this. He's all open like that. He just knows how to get into those spots. See him go to his knee? Yeah. That's what Iserman's going to their knee. Now watch, watch him go down their knee when he shoots. Iserman does that too. Watch. Watch when he shoots, kid. Put so much into it, he goes right down to his knee. Here's the other hero of yesterday. All right, Dougie Gilmore, watch this lovely pass right up the middle. Puts it right on the tape. Tidor was the story, 42 to 13. But I'll tell you, Dougie Gilmore, look at those, well, he's got those wide, look at that. Puts it out, making two million bucks. If he's not making four million bucks next year, I'll eat your hat. One more thing, Good. everybody talks about Scotty. Why is Scotty such a great coach? Well, he get this, he get at that. McCarty got a dumb, dumb penalty with two minutes to go when Vancouver was coming off, and he got on. They could have tied it up or somewhere, not tied it up, but they could have come right back. At 99.9 .9 coaches, that's it for McCarty. The next shift when he come back, he put. I was watching if he put him on, put him right back on, because if he hadn't put him back on, he'd have lost him for the playoffs. That's what makes Scotty's great. He's a master. Daring to be different. Uh, Don Cherry in the coach's corner on Hockey Night in Canada. Coach's Corner on CBC. Brought to you by B.F. Goodrich. B.F. Goodrich. Take control.
2-2 after 20 minutes in Uniondale. One of the spark plugs that goes without saying in this series for Toronto. Standing by now at the rink with Scott Oak. Darcy, the rally has the Leafs tied with the Islanders now, but I think most people watching this game would agree it was a bit of a soft start for you. How would you explain that in this elimination game? I don't think it was a soft start. We had the first power play chance. Uh, we had a couple great chances on the power play to open the game up. Uh, I thought we started really well, but uh, got to stay out of penalty trouble. If you're going to win in this rink, uh, they got a good power play, and uh, their fans get involved when we get uh, penalties. You're at the eye of the storm as far as Islander fans are concerned. Does it bother you at all having any effect on you? No, not at all. It's... It's part of the game, obviously, uh, when you play physical hockey and, uh, and uh, things like that happen, uh, um, your fans are going to stick up for your players and uh, they're doing a great job for Mike and uh, Kenny. Thank you, Darcy. Thanks. Up to the Minute, brought to you by Ford of Canada, Canada's number one choice. Don Cherry absolutely loved the Tisdale Trojans' defense. Off the glass, great passes, and you know what, Don? They had a great gunfight. One of the most famous gunfights in Canadian history happened outside of Tisdale, Saskatchewan. They shot uh, four Russian Bolsheviks, the police out there. I thought you'd let... Don't comment, please. I don't know why I brought that up. It's in the museum in lovely Tisdale, northeast hub of Saskatchewan. Kyle McLaren, by the way, was confirmed today, suspended for the remainder of the first round. See if you can follow. The incident resulted from an instantaneous but inappropriate on-ice reaction by a defending player who was about to be beaten by an opposing puck carrier. I don't believe this was a premeditated attempt to injure. You're up to the minute. We'll come back with a second period on Long Island next. Up to the minute. Brought to you by Ford of Canada. Canada's number one choice. Islanders were up 2-0 in the first period. And the Maple Leafs came back to tie it. 2-2 now. And here's the second period for you in game six. Leafs lead the series 3-2. Win tonight. That'll be it. Islanders won a game seven. Orlev came back to pick off that pass. Evgeny Korolev plays it up over center and into the lead zone. Lume in the touch it. And that is called back. Well, a good heart. Played physical first period. Here are the goals. Tchaikovsky scores at 5.07. Off the faceoff. The shot gets through. Joseph makes the save. Tchaikovsky with nobody around him puts it in. Then Yashin takes a pass from Kavasha and fires it up into the top of the net. 2 0. Belak, when the four on four skater, grabs the rebound and backhands it in. And a little more than two minutes later, Jonas Hoke on a goal that the video goal judge had to review, and it just got over the line. Hoagland's third of the series. Tying the game. Islanders move out. Penalty coming up against Toronto again. Early in this period. Play comes in over the line, and McKay was caught. Well, that's that can opener play that Mike Milbury, the general manager, was complaining about not being called. As you can see, Miller gets outside. There it is, the can, and now it's open. And Miller goes down, and it's a, it's a hooking penalty. He doesn't get called on it every time, but when it's, he's beaten like that and doesn't get close to the man, it's called. Like there, it's the same play, but he catches up to the player. They call it tripping, of course, at 39 seconds. What a chance now for the Islanders. They have a power play goal in the game, scored, of course, in the first period on one of their three shots. Now they're in there again. Dix is in front of the net. Rebound was there for him. It was covered in time. He did not get to it. Kept on side. Barry on side by O'Coin. Berg after it. Tipped it to the corner behind the net. Ball comes back. He's shoved off the puck. It's Big Hammernick who takes it back. Long shot. High and wide. Joseph didn't see that either. He just heard it go by him and hit the boards. Berg trying to knock it out. Crowd wanted another penalty call. They don't get it. In front of the net. Back to the corner again. Yashin to the blue line. Back in for Yashin. With a break shot on the boards and he waits and waits. Now the pass. A good pass it was. Hammerlick fires it.
point shot starts the trouble for the lead. As it's off the post there and the coin sneaks in and puts it in. So if it isn't Hammerlick, it's a coin. And you can see that the Islanders nearly scored in the first one. That is the 10th power play goal for the Islanders in this series. And, and they've scored 17. So stay out of the penalty box would be the orders. Pat Quinn will be giving his Maple Leafs. Bates getting assists on the goal by a point. And it's a lead for them again. Webb dumped it in. Joseph stopped it. Another big rebound off Curtis Joseph. Another shot by a point. He missed by six feet this time. Other side. The shot by Van Ip. Knocked away from the net and in behind. Green is back there and Webb is all over him. Belak in on Webb. This is a big tussle. Webb is fighting hard in there. And the Islanders get the puck loose. Harmonic hangs on to his man though. Now Webb is pushing on the boards. Fights for it. Kicks it loose. Goes down on one knee and gets back up. And now he's down and won't move to the puck this time as at least bring it out. Down to center. Harmonic tried to pick up the pass in the backhand and didn't. Coming in on goal is Bleak. Centered it. Scatcher was in and tipped it high and wide. Green covers him. Not well enough though. Scatcher gets it out. And that's picked up in front by McGillney. His pass. Down the center, Tucker's long shot, McGillney dumped it center ice on the play. McGillney tried to knock it down and did. His glove up high, he couldn't do much with it. Scatcher back in, gets in over the line to the left side, it's fired from there, off the cave and wide of the net. Islanders fighting harder here in the second period to start it off. They're ahead now, 3-2 as Corson comes in, his pass. Healy's shot off the shoulder. Back to Healy. Another shot. Wristed right on the chin. Of the defenseman parallel. Leafs can't pick it up. Yashin! Stopped by Joseph! Yashin all alone. Hammerlick at the blue line. Shot off the skate. It from Kadasha. Knocked down in front of the net. Leafs get it out. Kadasha delivers a right hand to the chest of Pilash. Got away with that. Kavasha is bumped by Domi. They have words. Domi saw the right hand of Kavasha on Pilash and came up to say something to Big Kavasha. Well, there's lots of bodies flying out here tonight. The New York Islanders out hit the Leafs 21-9. Now, you can never trust the guy that counts the hits in this building because somebody leads the league every year. But here is the chance. Or Yashin, but he can't beat Joseph, and that would have given the Islanders a two-goal advantage. And this guy doesn't miss when he gets in here very often. Nice stop by Joseph, and a timely one to say the least. Timely, for sure, with the game 3-2. Islanders already had one two-goal lead in the game in the first period. And the Leafs came back to tie. But they're ahead again on the O'Coin goal, his second of the series. At 135 of the second period, Bates and Hammerlick assisted on yet another power play goal for the New York Islanders. Shots are 16, 15 Islanders. Pretty even then in that department. Islanders are in again. Here's a chance. Shot off the side of the post. Scatcher had a great chance there. Leafs get it up to Roberts. Going through center. Backhands it in over the line. They're on side and stay after it. Comes to Roberts who bats it on the boards and keeps it in. Paulie was knocked down. He got back up and hooked it back with a skate. Robert centering pass. Burke was in off the blue line. It was intercepted in front of him. Parrish got a stick in front of the Leafs. Keep it in. Long shot. Blocked by Osgood. He will hang on to this. Well, the Leafs did a good job of puck recovery. Three times in that shift. Paulie and Roberts and Hoagland. Bought the Islander player off for the puck and got it back to the point twice. And Osgood had to make a stop. Outside, post that low shot. Islanders causing problems inside that blue line. Very effective and very physical. 
They saw deep in the Islander zone, and the Leafs move up inside the line. A good 10 feet is Belak. Shot the puck around his net. Made up on the boards. It'll be brought out by Miller. Decides to fire the puck in from long range. Here's Miller to pick it up behind the goal. Batted away from him to the corner. Balk was hit. Ian Cairns puck together. Balk moved on the puck though. It goes behind the net to the corner. Good physical play by Tchaikovsky. He's given a puck now but gets loose from that. Cuts around the net with it. Leaves it for Miller who was missed on that attempt. Back in front. Quick shot by everybody including Tchaikovsky. He hooked it back to the point. Long shot. Screen. Knocked down. Joseph reached out and knocked it away. And there's going to be a penalty to the Maple Leafs. A lot of physical play in there. Joseph is hollering at the referee, Fraser, but Tchaikovsky was knocked down on the play. And I think Wade Belak will be the penalized player when all is said and done. It'll be Belak. When we come back, another Islanders power play. It'll be a five on four. That's what will happen. Belak and Carberley are gone for the Maple Leafs. And Schultz of the New York Islanders is in the box. He and Carberley had something going. Well, Belak gets the first penalty. Here it is here on Tchaikovsky. He's playing an inspired game tonight. You can see they're going to probably call that interference or tripping. And then after that penalty was called, a little melee broke out. And Carberley and Schultz got two apiece. So the Islanders will be on the power play again. And it has kept them alive in this series and may win this hockey game for them. Dynamite again in this game. Two for three in the power play. A total of eight shots, Harry, of three power plays. That's controlling the puck pretty well inside the opponent's blue line. And that's where the faceoff will occur this time. Belak interference. Coverlay, unsportsmanlike. Schultz, same thing. Down the ice. First point. Was just scored at 1.35 of the period for the New York Islanders, and a power play is on there again. And locks it to center. Pumps it in on the right side. Bates was over there to try and pick it up. Center by everybody. Down the ice. A coin had moved a bit too far. And it went behind. Up comes McCauley. McCauley going around the net. Circles and moves away as Osgood played it smartly. Coyne will bring the puck back out. This time he passes to Hammerlick, his defense partner. Joseph got that beautifully. Cleared on the boards. Hammerlick there, but Balk beat him and got the puck out. The point to Yashin. Had to turn back from Corson. Hammerlick gets his own. In comes Bates. Bates for the corner. Rolled it behind the net for Parrish. Parrish comes out, takes a look. He'll go back to the corner or try, and it was intercepted. Trying to bat it in there. A point. Passes one in deep. In front of the net is Bates. The shot from the short side by Yashin was no good. And Bates missed the pass. But it got to his defenseman. And now Hall turns and finds the opening easily to clear. 38 seconds left in the power play. Oliver's in again. Tchaikovsky. In there with Trent Hunter. And that's fired away down the ice by the Maple Leafs. 25 seconds left. The point around the net. 3 2, the Islanders are leading. Looking for another two goal lead. It's shot in. Joseph under the net missed that. Around the net, Miller just missed it. It'll be cleared again by Toronto. Out through center ice. Good play by uh, Travis Green. Tucker kills some time. Green up near center. But the point stopped that. Hunter brings it back in. Here's Miller. Around the net, centered it, hit the side of the goal. Clearing play, hit Hunter, kept in by Tchaikovsky. There's Tucker. McCoy hit him. Not hard, goal. Carberley brings it up. Shot is fired wide of the net. Incredible strength to this 3-2 New York Islanders. Here in game six. On the long island. Islanders are changing and the Leafs are moving. Center it, get away. Back in there for Blake. In on goal! Shot stopped by Joseph. Big rebound! Again, a centering pass. Korolev had a chance to shoot in the luck of the pass. Back in for Roberts. Roberts is big in! Shot is high! Knocked down. And the Islanders cleared off the boards and out. Bodies are.
They're flying everywhere in this second period. Two more hit the deck at center ice. In comes Gary Roberts. Couldn't catch up with the puck, but here's a shot. Blocked by Osmond. And he hangs on. Roberts and Webb are having words, pushing themselves to the corner, and now they get apart. Yeah, this is the Stanley Cup playoffs, all right, on Hockey Night in Canada, brought to you by La Bat Blue. Well, the Islanders have been very aggressive tonight, and the best body checker of all is this one, on a big-time, clean, but thundering body check thrown by Webb. Blake gets this chance, and Korolev walks in off the point and tries to pass it across. What a play by McCabe. Because you can see that Blake was Walson right in all alone, and McCabe's stick deflected it over his. 11.44 left in a hard-hitting, fast-skating second period. Islanders have the one goal and lead in 3-2. A coin scored that on yet another power play. Webb is up, tucked it up over the line. That play worked that time for Jason Blake. Now Webb trying to get loose. Nobody saw it except 16,000 here. Cairns back in his own zone. Crawley ripped the shot and put it right on. Hogan now lost it though. Got it back. But Crawley is up there too. But it's cleared back to center by New York. Long shot. That's a block. Blake after it. And the Crawley is back. Quick pass to Copperland. Up through center, Copperland gets his own, played it up the net, and it's cleared very coolly by Osgood. Got it up, and Bates took the pass and got rid of it. Pilas shoots it back in, icing will be the call. It happens, it touches it, he does on a race, and it's called back, icing. Well, Steve Webb, who's much more noticeable in this rink with his body checks than he was in Toronto, and he has thrown some dandies, I'll tell you that, and leads the team not only in the number of hits, but in the number of big-time ones. You saw the one on Roberts. Here he nearly kills his own player. There's the best hit of the night and the cleanest one. And Belak has been a tough customer. Webb into the board and Joseph clears the puck out of the way so you're not safe anywhere out there tonight. Cummins has just gone to the bench but he and Tucker had some words and it looked for a moment as if they were going to clash. Well the referee should crack down on the Islanders late changes. It makes that 15 second rule in the Olympics look, look much better idea. You've got to change. I know you get the last change when you're the coach at home, but you shouldn't be allowed to take 10 seconds after you see the opposition out there. Get it in next year and speed these games up. I second the motion. They get used to it. That's the beauty of it. The players just latch right on once they're caught two or three times. Up the center ice. Maple Leafs gain the zone. He has to stop. Trying to go around to the corner and then around the net. He has his deck in there. And it hit him. Comes up front. Chance! And down is South to make the big stop. The setup was made. Tucker whipped it in there. Could be a and penalty the shot on was play. taken and Osgood made a good save. And I think Kerry Fraser's going to give a penalty to Jason Blake, who hammered the lead player after the play. Nice stop by uh, Osgood. And then there's the puncher, the elbow by Blake, and he's going to go for it. Osgood's been much sharper tonight than he was in either game in Toronto. And the flutter shot off the stick of McGillney. He didn't get all of it. And then there's the elbow. 9.41 is the time of the penalty. There's been a lot... A lot more serious hits than that that have not been called. But after the whistle, remember that. Toronto's fourth power play of the game. They have one power play goal. Hammerlick shoots it off the boards hard right away. It's down the length of the ice. They're approaching the halfway mark of the second. Power play Toronto. They're down the goal. Paulie 
takes it up over the line. Drops it back to Hogan. He drops it back to McCabe. He goes the other way and the shot is on. Osgood sharp again. Here's Hogan stopping it behind the net. However, that wasn't a good pass. It's easily picked off and cleared by Kalasha. Cabernet. McCabe to his left. Cabernet racing in. Osgood out. Stop. Leaves it there for Hammerlick. Wide open for Scatcher and the point. And they get it out to center ice. Cabernet will take it up again. And a dandy move at the blue line. And then McCauley whipped the pass over in front. That Hogan missed. And then Tucker missed. Shot down again. Leaves are changing. Only 55 seconds left in the power play now. Just the one shot so far and moving to center. Cabernet lost control. They stay on side, however, and get it in. And that'll be easy. Cleared down the ice by the hand. Lines will get out of the way, these fans. Happens once in a while, and Green turns it back. And the Leafs take advantage of that. Shot to the glass. Tucker comes up. By him. It's kept in. Long shot. Rebound. Get back. Back up they come. Tucker left it go to McGillney. He turns now. Tucker and McGillney. Other side to the corner is Rumek. McGillney out front. Tucker fanned on it at the blue line. Penalty over. Relax. And move. Made a pass. Now the shot. And that's easily blocked. Racing away is Jason Blake. It's a two on one with Bates. Stopped by Joseph. And he hangs on. was to take the shot and Joseph made the save and smothered the rebound. Face off deep in the zone. Scatchered for the New York Islanders. Corson for Toronto. Somebody waved out. It's Corson. 8.03 left in the second period. It is 3-2. The New York Islanders are in front. And Domi will try to win a face-off. Yashin comes in. Scatchard also going. Now they're set. Okay, he wins it. Clean it. To the corner. Yashin. Gets away from Domi. Comes out. Weak shot goal. Joseph down. Kamasha on it. Gets it back to the point. Long shot. Knocked down. scramble Joseph couldn't get back on the skates and he was scrambling scrambling for it Mackie Berg in the meantime took a penalty what do we call a holding penalty it's in front of the net they have saved a goal as you're gonna see here the rebound comes off Joseph and Scatchard looks like he can get to it but he's tackled by Mackie Berg and can't get a stick on the puck this one comes with 7.47 left in the second period. There's a two-on-one rush. Elash, not Lumi, as I mentioned earlier, makes a nice play. Doesn't allow the pass. That allows Joseph to worry just about the shooter. And he made the save. 3-2, New York Islanders. They didn't drop it squarely. Again, they'll try the face-off in that circle. Islanders are two for four in the power play in the game. Macaulay's thrown out, so Gary Volk's going to have to take this penalty kill face-off. Oh, there's one second gone on the penalty on that uh, fake draw, so they got to put it back up as two. Funny, the mean time had not changed to 7.47. Two minutes now on the clock. We'll get that anyway, and the Leafs take it and clear it first. Point had a chance, a bit too high for him. Ball. Now they clear up, making the move. Trying to slow them a bit. Yashin! Just got away from that hit. 
It was Carvalho. Probably not the big hit anyway, Kelly. Lucky it wasn't Webb. Down the center. Knocked it behind the net. Toronto Maple Leafs on it to keep it in. That'll be Beats. Boy, we're not doing well so far in this power play. And up they come. Beats pass. Jackson takes it over the line. Threw it over in front of the net. Here comes a shot. That's high and wide. Beats came in after it. But it'll be green of the Maple Leafs. who will hook it away. Tucker is a man up with it. Tucker coming in. He turns at the blue line. Fires a shot. Down across it from the Osgood. Green was in there against Hammerlick and this is Okorn. Out he comes. Islanders power play move up. 50 seconds left on it. No shot this time. Pilash hit it hard. Gets it the length of the ice. 6.30 left in the second. Islanders trying to increase that lead again. They were ahead 2 0. Leafs tied it. They got a goal early in this period on the power play. It was a coin who scored it. He's on the ice now. And the Leafs move it up to a coin. There he is. Pass knocked down the low. Nice play up the line to keep it in. That was Reichel. was on top of him. And it will stop at the Maple Leaf blue line. And the penalty is now shot down the ice. They won't call icing on this one. Even though Bird had just stepped from the box. Did it hit that line up there? 5.38 left in the period. Leaves it. Fill it off. A major accomplishment. The way the Islanders have been so strong on their power play. Good hustle to get back. And the Leafs lift it up. It was Roberts who poked it up the center ice. Roberts ran into Webb. He had him lined up. Webb is still stumbling. He threw a right hand at Roberts. Play goes right on and Roberts comes back after Webb. As the Islanders come in. In front of the net, Webb got a backhander away. Tipped up wide. And the Maple Leafs are on the attack. Reichel brings it up. Shoots it before he hits the line. He's headed off. Roberts comes in with a hit on his man on the boards. Blue man, pass to Bird. He can't get a shot through. It's blocked by the point. Berg is up there near the point again and kept it in. Blake was stopped by Berg. Islanders get it away to the point up over the line. Webb was turning to go off and now the point joins him. Those elites have timed and blew it up. And Berg takes the pass. A high one gets in over the line and it's knocked down. McGillney, though, couldn't play it. Back up for New York. Yashin has room. Yashin, good move! And the shot is on. And Curtis Joseph has to make a big stop off Yashin, who made a beautiful move to get open. Mike Bossy, part of the alumni, Nystrom, Bob Bourne. Bart Gillies, one of the real nice things that's happened here because for a while, the old timers, the alumni that had them on those great teams are kind of outlawed around here. 4.20 left in the second period. Islanders three and the Maple Leafs two. Domi won't get near this. Cairns was in there in front of him. Shot out and down the ice again. The Leafs had to hurry back. We last good. Played it by Kavasha. Barely missed it. That's Schultz turning. Islanders in. A low shot. Stopped by Joseph. Big rebound ball. Kavasha gets it out. Another shot from the crowd. This block carries in the back up in a hurry as Corson got it down the ice. Kavasha stepped over in front of Healy. Corson upended across the line. Look for a penalty. Now he grabs Schultz. They had words, hooked each other a bit. They goes right on. Corson has gone to the bench. Heaney up over the line. Trying to stick handle in. Two Islanders sandwiched him. Domi ran into Schultz. It's chopped out over the line by Bates. Green circles at center. Back to Coverley. Moved it up to center with a nice pass. Green got in. Couldn't shoot it. He's tied up. And it's brought back out by Paris Shot, New York. Down with Bates. He's still.
feeding in, and he can do that. The shot, stop, rebound. Joseph made a big stop on that shot. It was a bullet. Leaks get it up the center. McGillie is up there, but the pass doesn't get to him. Cleared back in by New York. 2.40 left in the period. Coverley cancels away to center ice. He flipped it before he got to the line. The Islanders turn it back. Here's the point. One man back. He got it in for Blake. Shot. Oh, Joseph's blocker. Blake after his own rebound. Good move by Blake. Good hustle. But the Leafs get it out. McGillney just missed it. Cleared to center again. Lume has to wait till they are outside. He doesn't wait. Tucker and Webb are pushing and shoving. A little left hand, a late one by Tucker under the jaw of Webb. They're uh, at our swing again as the linesmen come in. Well, the play was offside, so all this uh, extracurricular activities went on after the whistle. I don't think they're going to call any penalties. Webb has nailed quite a few leaps tonight, and here Tucker wants to give him a little bit of his own medicine. Father Webb, very much. 2.10 left in the period. Tucker all afire. Intentional offside, they're calling it, so they're bringing the faceoff all the way back down into the leaf zone. 3-2 Islanders, game six, trying to force a game seven back in Toronto. It's scheduled for Tuesday, should there be a game seven at seven Eastern. Gashin won it, coming, shot of the head. Fake. Backhander coming up. It stopped, but a rebound, and Joseph reached over to make a big save. Parrish was in and thought he had one. Parrish watches. New pair, Roberts, jumped at the blue line. Roberts, one-on-one -on -one call. He doesn't get it. Bates comes in again. He stopped, cleared out. Roberts trying to hustle for it. Karens is there, and he saw him pop. And Karens ran into the boards, and Roberts is hurt. Roberts is hurt. He sidestepped the head all right, but he might have twisted his knee. And Roberts is tough trying to get back to the skates. Forget now, Roberts was out a long time with that uh, rib injury, and he's recovered enough now to complain to referee Dvorsky that it should have been a charge, and he's cut, as you can see, on the left cheek. Well, Roberts had that muscle tear, Harry, near the rib. He was telling me one day, the ribs are fine, but there's nothing they can do with the muscle tear. They just have to wait and wait and wait. It has healed enough, and he was delighted to say he was able to play. Doctors gave him permission. He wanted to, of course, and here he is. Now, he saw that hit coming and backed off. Now, let's have a look at this. has been a nasty game, to say the least, and there's the one ball early in the same shift that Parrish nailed Roberts, and then the puck will come back to Roberts shortly, and here it is right here. Now, watch Karen take a run at him. It's out of the way, and then Karen that went into the leaf bench, came back and clipped Roberts in the face. And he looked a lot worse then than he did once he composed himself and got over to speak to the referee. Got stumbled a bit when he got up. That's why I thought maybe he might have twisted his knee trying to avoid that check. Boy, he was lucky he got out of the way of it, I'll tell you that. And there is Chris Rodgers patching him up. But he was going into the leaf bench the hard way if he didn't pull up. Now there's the stick. You can see Karen's stick comes up from underneath and clips Roberts in the cheek. <laughs> Jumps, comes down on his there face. There it is. The stick okay, but the left left leg is what took all the weight. Seems to be okay though. I think it, it's uh, more of a being stunned by the stick than yeah. anything else. Look, like it was worse than that. Comes with a minute and a half left in the period. Boy, it's been another tough period. No question about that. Here's Domi. Pass by Domi. A shot by Corson is blocked. Yanshin gets the puck out. Kavanshi is with him on that far side. 
Kavasha along the boards. McCabe takes him in on the boards in the corner. Yashin gets the puck away. Trying to move away from his check. Domi won't let him move. And John to Kavasha poked it ahead. Parvale is watching his man. Big crowd along the boards, and the puck is fired to the corner, and Joseph is out with Yashin there. Yashin will get to the puck. Will he get a chance to make a play? I don't think so. He's down now. Domi took him down. Domi also down and out of the play, and the Leafs hang on by lifting the puck out and down the ice. Parvale fired it over. Torsen might do something with this. The shot is on, and Osgood had the angle. No problem. Torsen kept coming for the net, and of course... They jump in front of him. 33 seconds left in the period. Well, this has been a very abrasive game, and the Islanders are much more physical here than they were in Toronto. And uh, if you've got the puck for very long, look at Dobie's got a hold of Cairn's helmet to strap. If you've got the puck very long, you're going to get hit. And uh, the Islanders making a determined bid to stay alive been very aggressive and here you can see this Karen stick was stuck in the skate of course and he wanted a tripping call 33 seconds left 3-2 New York second period shots are dead even 23 the Islanders have the majority of the hits but the Leafs are creeping back with several of their own a solid hitting hockey game. No doubt about that. Blake has gone to the bench. Islanders have the five on, ready to go in front of Osgood. Leave six. Five in front of Joseph are all inside the line. Well, the team's at full strength for the last 30 seconds of the period. Despite the rough going moments ago, no penalties. Green's being thrown out. The linesman here is throwing a lot of guys out. Tucker takes the draw. McCoy, the goal scorer of the period, gets it out to center ice. McCoy there at center himself now gets set to roll it in. Lifts it in wide of the net. Joseph goes the other way with it. To get away from Webb. Oh, Webb is in there with a hit again on Lume this time. Bates, he's stopped. Here comes Webb. into the crowd and then hit will you? Here it is over and now he's standing and cheering. Webb at center ice and Lume gave him a shot going by. Steve Webb. He's a piece of work, is he not? Well, Darcy Tucker's a marked man, so Webb's getting a great ovation for this one. Right as the period ended, up the boards to the left to Joseph. Here comes Webb. Tucker dumps the puck out. Takes that shot from Webb. I'm not sure Tucker even touched the puck. The only goal was scored on a power play at 135 of the second period. Bates and Hammerlick assisted on a point second of the series. 3-1, New York. Here's Islander veteran Claude Lapointe. Claude, uh, Islander seven years out of the playoffs. You were here for five of those. Were you starting to think you would uh, never see the postseason again? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, every year we, we hope to get a, to, to have a good year, to get a good start. And, you know, go to December, January, you're out of the playoffs spot for six years, five years. Uh, you know, it's really disappointing. Should anybody be surprised at how nasty this game has turned? No, no we're not surprised at all, especially last game what happened to Pekka and Janssen. Uh, we, know we have to respond tonight. I think we do that pretty well. Thanks for your time, Claude. Thank you. There's Islander veteran Claude. The point standby for after 40 minutes. Ron McLean will talk to Islander great Clark Gillies here at the Nassau County Coliseum. Islanders with a power play goal from Adrian Coyne lead the Leafs 3-2 after 2.
That's a beautiful voice of Dan Kelly describing one of Clark's uh, many great contributions to those four consecutive Stanley Cups. Here's Clark Gillies joining us now from Long Island. And Clark, uh, great to see you, first of all, and to see all the alumni there. They must be doing a super job of creating a, a good mood around there again. Uh, it's wonderful, Ron. This, this place is, uh, is on fire. I, I've talked to so many people that watched us win the four Stanley Cups, and I'm emotionally drained up to this point. I said, I can't imagine going through three more series and doing this four years in a row. Isn't that something? Yeah. Tell us about the, uh, the series and the game uh, tonight. I don't think some of the players who are running around would be running around if you were playing in that game, but <laughs> boy, it's tough. I can't remember a series, and you were in some beauties that uh, so many key players were uh, banged up. Can you? Well, that was one of the reasons I think that we were so successful is that we stayed pretty healthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, being good is one thing, but you've got to have the horses to pull the wagon. And uh, we were fortunate not to have too many injuries over those years. Uh, it's been very physical, I'll tell you what. And then uh, some of the things that have gone on have uh, fired up a lot of guys in our team. I mean, all the guys in Toronto are, are playing hard, and there's been some things happen that have been very controversial. But this is a very tough game, and uh, sometimes you get a little carried away and some things happen. But... Um, I think they're playing it hard there tonight, out there tonight, and, and it's been a wonderful game up to this point. Of course, I'm obviously cheering for the Islanders, but uh, both teams are very, playing very, very tough at this point. Yeah, you really appreciate the price that gets paid, don't you? You know, 1974, when you won the Memorial Cup in Calgary at the Corral there with the Pats, right. uh, they always said your fight in the second period and your big goal when you came back on the Quebec Ramparts. Do you remember who the referee was that night? Uh, it might have been Kerry Fraser. It was. <laughs> Isn't that something? All these years later, Fraser... Do you remember the, the guy that I had to fight with? Uh, in that R case, is that... Richard Nantes. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Well, that was the same, same situation. You know, you're down three to one after a period, and you look around the room, and you say, well, I better do something to get this team fired up. And, and uh, it hasn't, the, whole, the game hasn't changed a whole lot since then, I'll tell you that. No, you know, that's the thing you think about. Like, uh, we just showed that goals from the 1980 playoffs. Ask Pat Quinn if they were talking about referees. I mean, right. So, uh, a good question for you, though. Do you like the two referees? You know, they've, they've uh, kept it pretty close tonight as much as they can. I mean, there's been some things that uh, they possibly could have called. But I think, they've, you know, on a whole, they've done a real good job tonight. Uh, they're letting the guys hit. Uh, you know, you got, you got a bunch of guys running around out there. Webb has, has delivered some vicious body checks tonight. Uh, and Toronto's played really tough as well. And uh, we were in Toronto the other night watching the game. Bobby Nystrom and I flew up with a friend of ours. Uh, we were able to go up and see the game. It's just real tough hockey. Uh, you know, there's been some hits that have been controversial. Obviously, you don't like to see what happened to Kenny Johnson, and you don't like to see what happened to Pekka as far as we're concerned. But, you know, and, and we've, we've just decided, uh, and, and we, we sit here and we've talked to the players on this team and say, you've got to go out there and just play hard. This is not going to be easy. This is a very, very tough game. And uh, uh, if you're not ready to pay the price, then you're not going to be successful. And I think, uh, I think you see that from our squad tonight, and uh, that's not to take anything, anything away from the Leafs. Uh, it's been very, very tough, very, very physical hockey by both teams. I saw Bob Nystrom gave his uh, award for the unsung hero to Steve Webb, so he loves him grapes. He gets on his nerves, but, you know, Don's kind of loving the Leafs, just like you're loving your Islanders. <laughs> hey, uh, just a thought on, uh, we were saying Brett Hall in the coach's corner, a uh, big game last night for uh, the Detroit Red Wings, and you played with the, uh, the other most famous power play goal specialist in the Stanley Cup history, Mike Bossy. How would you mm -hmm. compare those two? Well, they both deliver the puck a lot of different ways. Uh, Brett's always been a very talented goal scorer. Uh, Mike Bossy, in my opinion, was the best goal, goal scorer that I have ever seen. Uh, I think most goalies could never figure out which, which of the ten ways he could shoot it that he was going to shoot it. Um, you know, they come up, and good players tend to come up in big games, and Brett certainly did that last night for, for Detroit. Uh, I was very shocked at the fact that Vancouver was able to beat them the first two games in, in, in Detroit. But at that point, when you look at the talent level that uh, Detroit has, and you know what, the, the age factor may creep in there before the playoffs are over, but this is a very proud bunch, and they obviously showed that coming back and winning four straight. As you used to do back in those uh, mid-80s, well, not you, but some of the guys. Geez, could listen to you all night. By the way, Dennis Sobchuk's mom, I saw her out at uh, Wiscana in Regina. Uh, uh -huh. Say hello to you, so uh, well, for Dennis and Eric. Clark Thanks Gillies. A lot, Ron. Yep. Two thirds of the great trio grand of Mike Bossy, Brian Trotche, the Islanders. Uh, they were something to behold, and the mood's just as fun down there. Uh, not for Toronto, mind you. What a game it is. The Leafs trailing 3 2. Game 7, if required, will be Tuesday night, 7 ET, at the ACC. After 40 minutes, brought to you by Honda Power Equipment Dealers. The yard sale is on now. 
Back at Studio 43 in Toronto, it's the Islanders 3, Toronto 2 after two periods of play in Uniondale. Yesterday, the Montreal Canadiens, Jose Theodore, unbelievable, and two players just into the lineup, Aaron Asham and Bill Lindsay with a huge contribution as the Habs won at the Fleet Centre in Boston to go up in the series against the Bruins, getting set for Game 6 tomorrow night at the Molson Centre. Earlier today, Steve Armitage spoke to Bill Lindsay. Bill Lindsay got a chance to play in Game 5 in Boston, and Bill, you made the most of it. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good opportunity for me. Uh, we've got some depth here on this hockey club, and with uh, Zednik going down, gave me an opportunity to get back in, and uh, it was good. I got, I got, uh, got a goal, which was exciting, and uh, we got a big win. Bill, I don't think you want to see uh, Theodore as busy in Game 6 as he was in Game 5. We've got to be more aggressive, that's for sure. They took the play for, for two periods. They totally dominated the play, and Theo won the game for us. I mean, it's pretty bottom line right there. So we've got to come out with a little better effort and uh, get some more rubber at Byron if, uh, if we're going to have some success in Game 6. What's the confidence in the room going into six? Well, we're good. We're in a good position. Uh, we know where we're at right now. There's, there's a tinge of excitement in the room, you know, that, but uh, the, we know that the fourth game is the hardest to get. So we're excited about our position. Uh, we're excited to be in front of our fans at home. Hopefully we can use that to our advantage and uh, try and get the, the closing fourth game. Bill, have you got the word yet? Are you going to play in six? I think so. I'm not sure. You never know. Uh, they've always got decisions. But I think so, and uh, hopefully I can get in there because <laughs> it's going to be a fun game to be part of. Bill Lindsay looking for goal number two in the playoffs. There's Saku Koi with the Montreal Canadiens. What a wonderful story for the eighth seed in the East against Boston tomorrow night, coast to coast at 7 o'clock Eastern on Hockey Night in Canada. Welcome back to Long Island. The score, the Islanders three, the Maple Leafs two. Third period coming up now. The shots are dead even. 23 apiece. The Leafs have had seven penalties called against them. The Islanders six. Islanders have two power play goals in the game. The Leafs have one of their own. Islanders first to get the puck in. Shot in around the net. Pauly bumped in on the boards and there by Cummins. Aaron's pass. Back for him. Down the ice. Bounces wide of the crease of the net. No, and hit the crease going through. So no icing. Waved off right away by the linesman there. And down the ice it comes. For Cairns, he has to hurry. Here comes Roberts. Roberts caught him. A late bump goal. It wasn't a hard check. Down the boards. Hogan gets it out. Pelash keeps it in. Little weak backhander stop by the defense of Cairns. He rolled it up the center. Roberts hit him again. Two teams are changing. Up in the center ice area, loose and shot in by Toronto. Centered. Yasin. Out to the line. In over the leaf line with a shot. Out by Joseph. He got a lot of wood on that shot. And Joseph made the right pad save and covered. Curtis Joseph played the best period he's played since returning from his injury in the second period. A half a dozen real good chances to score. That shot handcuffed him a little because it went off the leaf defensive stick and dipped. But Joseph made the save and recovered the rebound. But he was as sharp as he's been since his return in the second period. They got one goal on him on a power play early, but he stopped the other ten shots. You're right, a lot of them very difficult. Problem down here at the end that uh, the light, the, the green, green light, light that signifies the end of the period is on. And he can't turn the red light on, so we're going back to the waving the white towel if the goal judge thinks he scored. What do the goal judges do now, anyway? I mean, wave the towel. I saw a few of them at the museum the other night, just right in the dinosaur section. They stop. One by Toronto. They're out quickly. Domi dumps it in. Osgood had a motion to leave, but Healy was up and nearly got a chance. Healy is stopped. Pass gets ahead to the line, and Kamash is away. Up over the line he goes to Yashin. Yashin waited. Pass went by everybody. Broken up and cleared to the corner where Kamash has it. Behind the goal, Yashin coming out. Yashin's backhander through the crease. Kamash's stick was tied up. Leaps get it down.
the ice. And with a hard shot, all right. Right on, Corson drilled it. He had Domi up with him. But Osgood didn't give an inch on that short side. Well, one thing that's very noticeable is the extra effort that Yashin's putting in tonight. He even threw a body check that last ship. But he has had six shots on goal and has scored one goal and is playing a much more determined game. Here's the chance by the leaf shooter from the bad angle that's easily handled. And here's Nomi who has tangled all night with Karen. <laughs> 3 2, Islanders leading the Leafs. Green wins the draw. But the Leafs can't stop it at the line that was Carvalho. Pass gets up across center and Green brings it in. He's covered, took the shot. Anyway, off the glove of Osgood. Off the glass. Green now from the corner behind the net trying to come out. Green centered it. Right there was Webb. Comedy played it up ahead on the board to Blake. Webb catching up with him. Blake turns around. Waits. Webb was in front of the net. From the corner now, he brings it out. Tossed it back to LaPointe, and Blake. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. On the line, Van Inch shot high and wide. Other side, a point. He lets it fly. That's blocked. And Van Inch had to skip back to cover up. The Leafs had a chance to move. The point coming back. Reichel is up for checking. Pulled away from him is the lead. Point. Hot pass down the ice. Broken up. Ball reached for it. Didn't get there. Back in for Hunter. Of the Islanders. He is stopped by McCabe. Miller comes in to help. Steals the puck. Gets a shot. this one. So Pelash took his man and nobody took Miller and that's why it's 4-2. Miller's third of the series. Hunter got the assist on it. 3-11 was the time of that goal. That gives the Islanders a two-goal lead again. And pass. It didn't get the relief player so the play will go on. Hunter comes up on the cave. High shot to Joseph. Out of the net. Joseph is pulled over Cave ran into him. Miller has it, centers it. Another high shot, and the New York Islanders get a three goal lead on Toronto. Kurkowski second. Two goals in 38 seconds. Now, you think this crowd is that in a good mood? Listen to this. Well, Sarkowski, who's played an inspired game tonight, as of many of his peaceful teammates, Yashin being another one, Joseph gets back into the net after being knocked down by McCabe. And Sarkowski, with Joseph a wee back in the net, sticks it up over his catching glove to make it 5-2. to two. 
boy, it sure looks like a seventh game now. 16-05 left to play in the third period. The, the Islanders playing a very spirited game tonight. Have taken a 5-2 lead. That's a long climb back up. Now for the Maple Leafs. You never know. But it won't be easy. Tarkovsky second of the game. 349. That fifth goal. is bumped behind the net. Perry couldn't get it out. Shot is drilled by Hoagland, but missed the goal. Islanders continue to hit. That was Cummins. And it's going to be a penalty call when they stop the play. And here's the whistle. Tchaikovsky makes it 5-2 New York. Jim Cummins is in the penalty box. It was called high sticking. It was after Gary Roberts' right here gets the stick up. The Leafs have a power play and they desperately need a goal. They get the draw, okay. And McCabe passes off. In front of the net. Cleared out. Islanders move it. Smartly down the ice. Jason Blake is up there in a hurry, and Joseph had to move it fast. Toronto up, Green through center. Blake on him. Can't stop him. Here's Paulson. Leaves it at the line. In front of Gilly! He made the pass, and his man was behind the goal line. What a chance for McGillney. Now he's got the puck again. Out to Paulson. To the line. Okay, drills it. Stop. Was an open side, but nobody could get the stick near it. Corson was the closest. Now in again with Yoni. Another pass by him. Harmlessly to the other side. Okay, lost it. So did Carvalet. And Camacho fell at the blue line. Carvalet missing it. Now he brings it back up with Corson. Corson left it at the line. Here's a scoring chance here with the king. But that's on the short side and stopped by Osgood. Man it. Lumbers out to the line and then lets the puck in. 38 seconds left in the penalty. A three goal lead by the Islanders. Ozzie, they're chanting. That's Chris Osgood, the goalie. Pilas coming in. He won't be tested on that. Pilas lost it and rolled to the board behind the net. Called. Dumped it out. No shot. To the line. Luman. Up for Hogan, back in front. No shot, there's one. And that's for Oswald. And he holds it. Ten seconds left on the power play. Well, Osgood has been strong too tonight after being pulled in Toronto. And has reacted favorably to that decision by the coach. Adrian Acoin played 24 minutes and 6 seconds in the first two periods. And he's going to make a real good defensive play right here on McGillney. By taking him, or McGillney would have had a tap in. Here's another look at it. Hammerlock comes out in front. But Jake Green. Well, he's not going to get involved. And there, McGillney was just going to put a stick on it. Osgood wouldn't allow it. He'll be close to 38 minutes when it's all over. A coin did that in the first period when the puck was in behind. Shot goes to the side of the net. Coin is there. And it's knocked in by the Maple Leafs from the scramble. Roberts is going to be the man who'll get it. Coin had a chance to clear that one and did not. So that's a power play goal for Toronto. And they're back in it with 13 19 left. Real nice play by Alan McCauley who walked out from behind the net. The Leafs win the draw. And there's McCauley. You can see him to the right of Osgood. He starts out and then slides it over to Roberts. And a coin this time did not tie his man up. And Roberts had a two-footer. A coin leaves. And by the time he gets to Roberts, it's too late. A nice play by McCauley and a good goal by Roberts. 
power play goal for the Maple Leafs, and as you mentioned, it was a power play in which they had to score on. Down three goals in the third period to a hard-hitting New York Islanders team tonight. They do get a goal, so they're back in it. Schultz plays it by Kabasha, out and down the ice. It'll be Carberley who'll touch it up, and that'll be an icing call against New York. Stanley Cup playoffs on Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Labatt Blue. An unfamiliar and uncomfortable spot for Michael Pecka to be standing. The captain of this team and has grabbed this team by the throat and led him into the playoffs. He's finished for the year. It's a 5-3 hockey game now. The Maple Leafs trying to fight back. 12.50 left. Third period. Off the glass and out. Yashin up there again, steps up over the blue line with Kavasha again. Didn't get the pass though, came up behind him. He didn't get a chance to play it. Again, Tuck, Tucker was hit. Crowd roared. Kavasha laid it in. Skatcher, he came close, raising the goalpost. Joseph picked that out. And it's clear to center, hammer it back. Then Islanders change. Throws it out. Already got caught that time. Healy takes it. He had to lift it away to center ice. And the Islanders bring it right back. Blake gets in with a wrist shot. It was offside. And boy, was he nailed when he let that go. <laughs> Blake is still down. Blake in the middle of his shot was nailed by Travis Green. And Blake's having a tough time getting up. A speedy little aggressive player. He's already been in on the scoring again tonight. And boy, he took an awful wall up here, though. Just as he shot it. There he is. Boom. Blind sided. Good body check. As long as you're not Blake. No elbow. And Blake never saw him coming and still doesn't know who hit him. Travis Green with that hard hit on Blake. You're right, he didn't see it at all. Took the shot looking at the net. And Green was coming from the other side. Wasn't as hard as a lot of hits we've seen tonight, but Blake had no idea who hit me. You could read his lips there. Who hit me? He says to the trainer. Wind knocked out of him. He's going to be okay, though. See, he's back up under his own power. All the home teams in the series have won to date. Toronto 3 1, 2 0, and 6 3 in Toronto. Islanders attacking again. Shot deflected at Joseph. He's getting up. Puck is behind the net goal. He's back up. Kavasha trying to make a play. Gomi racing over and beats a coin to it. Islanders won here, 6-1 and 4-3. And now they're leading in this one, 5-3, with 11.30 left in the third period. Dumped in wide of Osgood. And it moves it to the blue line where the Leafs were waiting. Tucker is on the boards, so is McGillney. And it's the Islanders who get the puck out. Nashville stick handles neatly again to center. That's where he lost it. Pulling back in, McGillney on an angle, so he keeps going. Around the net, comes out, turns, and fanned on the shot. He's going off. Islanders move up, Yashin dumps it in, he heads off. Coming up to the halfway mark of the period. Portion was dumped at center ice, and collision going off. Play continues. Roberts is in the zone, so is Hoagland. Roberts gets the shot. Rattled high and off the glass. Lume poked it to the corner. That's McCauley in on LaPointe. Roberts comes in trying to knock it loose. He does. Roberts, though, giving a light bump from behind by Korolev. Roberts shakes that off and goes away from Korolev. He's bumped again by Korolev, but at least keep it in. Roberts takes it back up for McCauley. McCauley to the blue line. Long shot. That's blocked in front of Osgood and cleared down the ice. And I see Paul coming against New York. Ten minutes and eight seconds remaining in the third period.
5-3 the score, the New York Islanders ahead. Corson talking to the linesman, hoping it was a referee. He was dumped going off yeah. on a line change. Yashin. Harmless little collision there that Corson was hoping would draw a penalty, but no dice. A little bit of a hit himself, actually going away. But somebody decked him. And he's not happy. His team is down two goals to the Islanders, who are trying to force a seventh game back in Toronto. If it happens that they win this game here tonight, Game 7 will be 7 Eastern time on Tuesday at the Air Canada Centre. Face off. Near the net. Back out to center. Better. It is dumped in wide. He moved to the line. Long shot. Joseph save. Gary Valk was waiting for the pass. Here it is. Poked the rink wide. And then was Paparowski didn't get too far. Ties it again by shooting it behind the goal. Valk there. In front of the net was Cabernet. Missed Islanders clear. Down the ice. Paparowski. With two goals in the game. Comes up looking for it. Islanders are changing, and Reichel just shot it across center ice, and he heads off. Cherkovsky again, pulled back, seeing the hit coming from Pulac. 9.15 left, Domi lost the puck at center. Harry's trying to play it ahead. Domi and McGivney both lose it. Islanders bring it in, coming in as Bates. After the shot. Poked away by LaPointe. LaPointe again in the corner. Domi on top of him. Rubbed him out back there and he lost the puck. The Islanders gain the puck again. The center. And three leads pick it up. One man back. Coming down. Across the line. To get me. Tossed it over. And easily picked off by Osgood. And he will just hold it. Two on one, and the Leafs got a very weak shot that the goalie held. Game six of this playoff, and it's the home team leading again. Toronto won three at home, Islanders won two at home, bidding for their third. The force a seventh game back in Toronto on Tuesday. It's 5 3 New York Islanders. Over the Toronto Maple Leafs with 8.38 left to play. Third period. Osgood steering this aside easily. Cameron lifting one in. It's wide of the net. And that'll be another face-off back in the New York zone. Here's Scott Oak. Bob, thanks very much. A lot of uh, Islander greats are reveling in the fact their team's in the playoffs and uh, looking like they might push the Leafs to seventh game. And Bob Warren's one of them. Bob, how's this team doing it tonight without two of their better players, Becca and Janssen? Well, I think uh, I respect Peter Laviolette even more than I used to because what they haven't done tonight is they haven't changed their game plan at all. They've attacked the net and they're throwing all the pucks right on Cujo and uh, getting a lot of rebounds. How much has this crowd had to do with the fact the Islanders have the lead? Well, I think an awful lot. I heard Pat Flatley from Toronto say, don't underestimate the Nassau Coliseum crowd, and we're, we're witnessing that tonight. Thanks, Bob. Good to see you again. Thank you very much. Bob, back to you. You're right on the money, Bob. No question about it. This is a great crowd. was when you played here, and it is tonight. And the Leafs are trying to end the series. Corson without a stick. Still plays the puck well and holds it with Kabasha right behind him. Nothing develops. Time winds down, though. 8.14 left. The Leafs in a two-goal hole. Down 5-3. Have a look at this little uh, routine. Corson dropped his hockey stick. <laughs> he tries to bat the puck away with his... Well, it comes off, and then he's smart enough to get his hands up out of the way. 
So he can finish the game. He gets a little bit of a shot. Sebastian, not a lot. Thirty-one shots by the Islanders now. Twenty-nine by the Maple Leafs. That's Healy chopping it. Healy again. Went after. Got it in. He was hit by Cairns as he did that. Hammer it back in his own zone around the net for Cabasha. Out he comes to center. Broken up and put back in by Corson. Runs a bit by Kabasha again as Helmut came off. Islanders get the puck up the center. Three of them get the lead zone. It's in for Webb. The turn and fire. Joseph had a lot of problems with it. Thought he had it, then didn't. And then thought he had it again and didn't. And it nearly got behind him. Well, whenever you see the goalie look back in the net, you know he doesn't know where the puck is. It wasn't a difficult stop. It just got under him. So, here's have a look at it. It's a bad angle shot that Joseph stops. Now, where is it? Can't see it in front of him, so he looks behind him, and lucky enough for him, it was under him. It's a little while ago, Corson and Webb were just bumping each other. Not much talking either, just... A little bump or two, and then they took off. Corson got his helmet lifted, though, by Kabasha near the boards. That's what Corson was upset about. Center, Hogan flips the puck in. Out is Osborne. To the glass. And stopped at the line by McCabe. However, it's LaPointe who gets a little room to go. And the center, poking out of his face, missed up. Leaves back in, Carmelet. Heads for the net, centers it. That's easily picked off of the Leafs around it in the zone. Golly shot, stopped by Osgood. Cave shot, that was deflected wide of the net. Backhanded in by Carmelet, round the net, Hoagland. Out front it comes, Carmelet is tied up. Comes back to the line, trying to put a final point to hit him. And out comes Manning. Down over the line he goes, around Carmelet. Seven minutes remaining in the third period. Crawley got away from Tchaikovsky to the line. Hogan left it there. Domi is nailed by Tchaikovsky. And it's shot in. Here comes Domi. He's got the puck there first. Hammerlick pumped him in behind. Domi goes down. Hammerlick poked at it. It's McGillney on the board. Back in for Domi. Hammerlick comes in after him again. He's hit by Hammerlick. Domi left it for Green. Hammerlick all over Domi there, and he won't let him get the puck. Along the boards, the Islanders get a chance to clear it. And finally, they do. They'll call it icing. With 5.51 remaining in the third period, the New York Islanders trying to force a game seven. They're ahead 5-3. to three. Injured player Kenny Johnson's family with his baby there in a 29 Islander shirt. Excited about what the way the game seems to be going. Talked to Kenny Johnson before game one in Toronto. I hadn't seen him in a little while. We chatted and he said, you know, I got a feeling this is going to be a tough series. He was right. And I have a feeling it's going to go seven games. And he makes you right there. Looks like it here, unless the Leafs can really get something going. They have 535 left to do that. And the Islanders are up by two goals. However, it's Toronto coming up. Lots of time left. Healy and Tucker are the attacking forwards, and they get the puck loose off the boards. Pass goes back to the line, intercepted, right back to the corner again. Healy poking at it. Cairns is all over him. It rolls loose, and Tucker takes it. Cairns and fired the shot. It's kicked loose. Harmelay missed a chance. There's a one-on-one. -on -one. Down comes Yashin. He's pulling it away from Tucker. And he's stopped again by Curtis Joseph. That's twice he was in. Twice he's been stopped by Joseph. Coming against New York now. La Point 
will be the penalized player, I do believe. Dan Ip is coming over. Cut your lawn for five bucks. You bet. Cut your lawn for five bucks. <laughs> Deal. Cut your lawn for five bucks. Sure. Sanders likes mulch. Honda's fuel efficient and low emission lawnmowers are so easy to use. You just may find yourself looking forward to cutting the lawn. Mrs. Barr. Our annual yard sale is on. Now's a great time to buy. There nearly was a pair of penalties. Van Imp is the guy in the box. LaPointe got away with one. Here's the chance by Yash and a nice play by Tucker just to touch the arm, I think, of Yash so he couldn't finish the play he was thinking of. Toronto needing another power play goal. A two for five in the game. The goal by Roberts here in the third was on the power play. They could really make things interesting with another power play goal now. 4.25 left. Van Imp in the box. He was called for slashing away from that crowd of players. And on the boards, Roberts tucked it back. Roberts gets it again. Center it right in front of the net. What a chance for Hogan. He didn't get much on it at all. It just bounced off his stick. And then was cleared. Hogan had a glorious opportunity to make it a one-goal game. Got it down near the line. Oh, and that shot by McCauley didn't miss by much. McCauley again. Fires it along the boards to Hogan. He got it back. He lashed it. It was a pass. He lashed again. Takes it. Comes in. He can't shoot it. He's covered. Lume sets it up. That shot is wide of the net. Roberts gets it back again to Pilash. Pilash to Roberts. Crowd in front of him. He won't get the shot through. He knows it. That backhander is knocked down. Another one in front. And it's Kadasha who will bear it out down the ice. Kadasha's had a strong game. Roberts feeds it back as the Leafs get organized. 3.20 left. Third period. Power play for Toronto. Has 30 seconds left. Are doing the job here. It's Bates. Ripped it away. Three minutes left in the third. Islanders lead by two, trying to force the game seven. Up the center ice, the Leafs get it in on goal. Osgood shoots the puck himself. That's a pretty good clearing shot by the goalie. Five seconds left in the penalty, and the crowd stands and roars. Yep, they're in command now. A two goal lead. Can they hang on? Navasha on the ice again. Doesn't get it out. Carberlay fake the shot and then was blocked. And it's to the line. But now will be cleared by Bannon. Waits, rolls it in. Got away from Corson and heads off. Through 15 remaining. The chance is let's. doesn't get the zone. Corson is splattered by Bates. Corson put the swing at Bates. Now Tucker and Bates are going to go at it. Corson and Cairns might go at it. This is a big crowd with 150 left. And they're all combatants out there. You can be sure. Tucker is throwing the right hand at Bates. Bates trying to come back. Tucker got that right hand loose. And he has a tough time getting it in, though. Bates scored with one. Corson and Cairns are over on the far side. And they're going to go. These are heavyweights. Cairns score right cross. And on Corson, nailed it three times. There's a fourth shot to Corson. And a fifth. But Corson comes back. This is a heavyweight foul at center ice. Cairns is throwing their right hand at Corson. Corson came back with two or three.
before he went down. Well, it started off with uh, Bates and Tucker, but they soon became the secondary fight to the main event between Corson and Karen. A lot of trash on the ice now, so we're going to be a while before we get this one going again. Tucker has taken his spot in the penalty box. Greetings from the fans. And the majors all over the place there for those four. Let's go, Islanders is the call from this crowd here in Long Island. 150 left in the third period of game number six. The Islanders opened up a 2-0 lead early in the game. And Tchaikovsky and Yashin scored. Belak and Hovland tied it. A coin, a power play goal, and the only goal in the second. Then Miller. Tchaikovsky was back. Roberts got a power play goal, and it's that two-goal lead again by the Islanders. 5-3 with 150 remaining. I think McCabe is trying to lobby the fact that Cairns with his helmet on and Corson without one, that he headbutted him. But this is how it all started as Bates roars over Corson and then Tucker comes in and he and Bates get involved. Now Corson knows he's not going to get in this stance, so he uh, searches Cairns out. And it became a much more belligerent struggle than the original one. Hand by Corson, which really started it, and then Tucker and Bates were so close together, they must have said, we're going, and they did. And then, as Harry just mentioned, away from the, that shot near center ice, Big Cairns and Big Corson locked into a dandy. Looks like Tucker's going to get the extra two here, Bob, for possibly being the instigator. So with 1.50 to go, the Leafs will be in the penalty kill mode. Karen's and Corson got into quite a little battle here, and this is what McCabe's complaining about. Right there, was it a headbutt or was he just ducking? I don't think he made contact, but that's what McCabe was over asking the referee about. But he couldn't sell him on that one. Corson was wide open for that right cross and he took it flush on the jaw. He can go down with that one though. Took about four or five more before he finally went down. Penalties at 18-10 are Corson for fighting, Tucker for roughing and fighting, Bates for fighting, and Cairns for fighting. So the minor penalty against the Maple Leafs Darcy Tucker will all but do it for the Maple Leafs in this game six. It's been a tough, tough night in Uniondale, New York. Well, here's what's happened. Sarkowski, two goals. Pauli and Hoagland, two points apiece. Miller, three points. Joseph, 15 goals in the three road games. We saw, while this was just before this started to go on, Blake went to the dressing room. Remember, he was the one that was hit. So it's a, it's a night is over for Jason Blake. But he was walking and it looked like he was in pretty good shape. No chances he's going to be taken. Almost set to go again. Reichel's going to come over and serve Tucker's two-minute penalty. Well, he can feel the air all night long. Started long before they dropped the puck at center ice to begin the first period. It was a big game, built that way. Of course, the Islanders, the loss, and their season is over. And it's been such a terrific season for the New York Islanders. Coming back and making the playoffs, what a big turnaround. Peter Laviolette has put on for these Islanders. Pekka, their leader, from start to finish, is done, unfortunately, for the Islanders score the series. Wherever far they go, done for the season. Outside at the Islanders' blue line. 
Ligament problem with the knee on the hit in Toronto the other night. 137 left now. Well, the Leafs battled long and hard, 100 points, and earned home ice advantage. And in this series, unlike a lot of them, home ice has been very friendly. Whether it will or not in Game 7, we'll have to wait and see. That'll be Tuesday in Toronto. Unless the Leafs can pull off a miracle here, they're shorthanded. With Tucker drawing the extra two for roughing. was motioning for Joseph to come off if that shoot-in had gone in behind the Islander net. But when it did in the offside occurred, Joseph stays in his goal. The face-off will occur outside the blue line. Telling McCauley that if he can win the face-off and get it in deep, the extra man will be out. But Joseph will take off. He's about 10 feet outside his goal line now. Here's Curtis, ready to go. Leaves are shorthand. They'll get even when they bring it in now as Joseph takes off to the bench. Here it in. One minute left. Leaves have the puck. And then the Islanders with the empty net. To center ice. Passion. He's going to do it. They know it. The shot played in front. He didn't do it. It was blocked and cleared back to center and dumped in by Toronto. They want Osgood to try it. <laughs> That's rubbing it in. 34 seconds left. Macaulay centers it. Yashin gets another throw on it. Gets the center and fell. Pave is all over. He won't get another chance. And it was still empty. And up for Conway. Gets it in with Roberts. Tossed it back to Sean. Wait. And he'll hold it with 13.9 seconds remaining in the third period. So regulation time is almost done. This one last stop probably by Osgood from the Maple Leafs. They don't give up. They keep coming. Tucker has the penalty. Goalie is out. They get the extra man. Which when you look, think about it, it's not the extra man. It just makes it by the piece. There's the cave. Making sure Yashin won't go anywhere with that empty net. There is an arena football game here this afternoon and no tackles any better than that one. Probably the last face off in the game. The seventh game is looming in Toronto on Tuesday at 7 Eastern. These two will be in another stiff battle, I'm sure, to find out who will advance to round two. The referee has just warned Cummins and Domi. No trouble with 13 seconds left. Don't do it. They're lined up at the rim of the circle, Cummins and Domi. And they're still talking, we might tell you. And they're going to go. How about that? Gloves are off and they're going to go. Domi and Cummins. Now these are two more heavyweights. Domi got the left hand popping away. And he's scoring. Left hands on Cummins. Cummins trying to come back with the right. Domi got the left flying at him. Domi hits him again. Cummins doesn't know where he is now. Domi is doing all the scoring here. Another left by Domi hit home. And down goes Cummins as they battle away after the faceoff. And you just knew that was coming. Seconds left. What a night in New York. Cummins playing his first playoff game this year. And he has been a physical, added a physical dimension to the New York Islanders. So we got more guys in the dressing room than we have on the ice or on the benches by now. 
5-3 New York, 34-33 the shot for the Islanders. Game 7 on the horizon. Joseph stays on the bench. Uh, good gets ready to celebrate. Toronto has had 33 shots in the game. He's made 30 saves. Domi and Cummins, Majors gone at 19.48. The score remains 5-3 Islanders. Shot and a save for Osgood and another face-off in his zone. 7.5 left on the clock. The crowd stands. And they'll cheer on the Islanders who will head off now and get ready for Game 7 in Toronto on Tuesday. 7 o'clock Eastern the time. We remind you again on the CBC Network as Hockey Night in Canada continues with your Stanley Cup playoffs. Leafs won the draw. Pilak shot into the crowd. And yet another face-off with 3.2 seconds left. Pilash and Schultz. They won't go. Been a long night. <laughs> yes, it sure has. An 8 o'clock start to begin with, which is later than usual. And you've seen the final save in the game. The New York Islanders have defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs. to Toronto on Tuesday night. This has been a tough hockey series. Make no mistake about it. The Islanders prevailed here at home once again with five goals. Game seven, next up. Here are the 4-3 stars of the Isles Game 6 victory, Tchaikovsky, Miller, and Roberts. And here's a Toronto area boy standing by with Scott Oak. Yeah, here's Eric Cairns, Ron. He wasn't on the uh, list of three stars, but he made his presence felt tonight. Let me ask you, first of all, were, uh, were Tucker and Roberts marked by the Islanders tonight for special treatment as a result of what happened on Friday in Toronto? No, not at all. Uh, we marked everybody on their team. We just uh, we knew what we had to do. We had to go and play physical against everybody and uh, hit everybody and, uh, you know, those are two guys that uh, we have to hit to uh, win games. Don't often see bouts of fisticuffs in playoff games, but there were you and Corson going at it late. Uh, where did that come from? Well, I mean, it's a, it's been a heated series, and, uh, you know, things happened. Uh, motions were high in the building, and, uh, you know, that, that stuff happens in a, in a hockey game like that. Eric, uh, we're out of time. I want to thank you for yours. Yeah, I'd like to say hi to uh, some people back home, my parents, my girlfriend, Catherine, and all the boys at my house. Hey, guys. Nicely done. Ron, back to you. Excellent. His dad, Rick, uh, drove down for the first two games, but I guess was watching in Burlington See there. See the blood in the knuckles? Yes. All the fights on. Now, I told you the very first game, Webb's a guy running around, banging and smashing. I said, you won't see him in a fight. There he is right there. Anyhow, he didn't see him in a fight. He was doing all the banging. The guys like Blake had got a fight. Well, first in the game, Osgood can see every puck. They've got to get in. They've got to bang him around a little and get going. That's the only way they're going to win. But I'll tell you, when I see a... I'm not going to get into that again, but when I see a guy running around, banging guys, and then other guys have to take and fight the battles. I don't like it. You made a good point right at the start. When the Leafs took a couple of penalties early, it looked like they were somehow either caught up in the emotion, I don't know what, but they were Well, I told you early. before the game, didn't yes, I? Yes, you did, that they I, would uh, have They're a not going to win, but they're going to win coming back seventh here. Seventh games in history. The only time the Islanders have ever lost a seventh game... It was to the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1978. You know who scored that one? Lanny. Lanny. By the way, in that With series, a broken wrist, too. Yes, so maybe Matt Sundin will make a return and yes. bring everything full circle. I don't think so. Or Brad is Mr. The one thing about 78, all the first six games were all home victories, and then Toronto won it on the road. So there you go. We have tomorrow night, Game 6, Montreal-Boston. Tuesday night, for sure, Toronto and the Islanders, Game 7. Thank you, Don. Awesome. The Sunday Report is coming up along the network next. The Isles defeat Toronto 5-3 for all of us. Uh, thanks for watching tonight. This is Canada's own.